Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm sitting down to make a really quick video about who should or should not move to Uruguay. You don't have to take this 100% but I just wanted to make a brief little video based on the comments of my everything I hate about Uruguay video which once again was not meant to be quite so serious I wasn't saying I hate this I hate that it's just the title and it is all relative based on the comments under that video I am very aware that for a lot of people who want to move to Uruguay the no Amazon shopping is really not a big deal and it's really not a deal breaker. It's also not a deal breaker for me to be fair, but yeah, so let's just break down who should or who will find it really easy and enjoyable to move to Uruguay and who might not. So to start with, most people who migrate to Uruguay seem to be from the United States and seem to also be retirees. If you have a decent amount of retirement money and you're looking to really slow down, relax, and just like live a much slower paced life, Uruguay is going to be a really great option. If you have a stable online income, particularly if it's in US dollars, you're going to find it very comfortable living here. It's pretty much the only reason we're able to live where we do and do the things that we're able to. We're definitely not living lavishly by any means, but we're not struggling. Um, and that's because I earn in US dollars. Additionally, if you just love a more slower paced, old school life, if you hate Amazon and like big businesses and you love going to really specific small stores to get all your individual things and like going to the butchers, going to the bakery, like going to the fruit and veg store, rather than going to big supermarkets. Same goes with like hardware stores or like clothing stores. Everything here seems to be individualized still and there's not very many big department stores, which for a lot of people is a big benefit. For younger people, it can be just a change of pace thing. Like I know for me, it wasn't so much that I don't like supporting small businesses. That's 100% not the case, but especially when you don't own a car, being able to just go to one store or one shopping mall and do most of your shopping all in one place. For example, going to a Target, that's really convenient. Is it the end of the world that they don't have Targets yet? No, but it is something that I do miss sometimes. Okay, now who should not move to Uruguay or who will find it difficult here? If you're looking to find work here, but you don't speak fluent Spanish, you're going to find it very difficult. Not only do companies here like to prioritize giving jobs to locals, they really do require you to have very, very good Spanish. So if you are certified in Spanish, great. But again, keep in mind that it needs to be Argentinian or Uruguayan Spanish because like the phrasing are going to be different. Like even Alejandro finds that sometimes people will like assume he's a foreigner just by the way that he talks and his mother is from Uruguay. So the Spanish he knows should in theory be Uruguayan Spanish, but because like growing up in a bilingual household, he learned quite a bit of Spanglish. So sometimes that, you know, can be noticeable and employers will pick up on that. Now, if you are someone who relies on the, not only the convenience of Amazon, but also the really low prices, you really might struggle here. Of course, next day delivery is not usually like a necessity and most people can really get away with not having that. Moving somewhere that requires you to I mean, be a little bit more creative with where you shop does also mean that things are more expensive. You can't go on Amazon and purchase like laptops and things. Electronics here are very expensive. So that's another like another point on its own. If you're used to being able to buy cheap things, then you're going to struggle in Uruguay because everything here is more expensive. It just is. 
fruit and veg or anything locally grown is probably the only thing that's gonna be cheap. Sometimes labor is cheap. For example, getting even like getting my hair done is fairly cheap, but buying physical things, particularly electronics, are super, super expensive compared to other places. For example, a PlayStation 5 here is like $1,500 or something, and you can get it for like $600 US dollars in the US. They might not be 100% accurate, but I'll have up on the screen like <laughs> some options. Okay, another point that again is very specific to what I do. If you have social media aspirations, especially in like fashion or in any in any area where you are hoping to get free products sent to you or like paid brand deals, keep in mind that the aduanas, so the customs and import situation here, is difficult. It's <laughs> it's annoying. It's going to take you a long time to get your head around, and it is going to cost you money. For example, for like medium to small influencers, it's pretty common for brands to want to send you free products for you to then like review and like share content on, on your social media. But if you then have to pay 60% of the worth of that item at customs just to receive the package, then you're actually then paying to do this work that was supposed to be free anyway. So you can kind of see how that does become a problem. Again, I'm very aware that this is a very specific problem and that this is not going to relate to most people, but even accepting gifts from family members can be really problematic because, because they will try to charge you for these gifts. Or if my parents were to send me some of my own belongings in Australia, they will then potentially try to charge me 60% of the estimated worth of those items at custom, even though it's items that I've owned for the last five years, but because it's being shipped through customs, there are these additional costs. Okay, and finally, if you are someone who requires big and tall clothes or shoes, you're gonna struggle here, whether that's women's or men's, they do have larger sizes here. I think you're gonna be better off in like the women's curve range, but if you're tall, you're going to struggle. I'm hoping that things will change soon because we've seen quite a few younger people who are at least six foot tall. But to find clothes for that here, like one of the people who helped us move, move into his new apartment, he was over six foot, he would have been like six foot three or four. And we had to ask him where he buys his clothes from. And he said that pretty much you can only find sports clothes that fit to find any nice fitting clothes. You have to buy them online from the United States and then you've got to pay all of those imports. So shoes as well, finding large shoes is going to be a problem. So again, if you're not a tall or a large person, this is not going to bother you. But if you are, and a lot of people in the United States are used to being able to go out and buy big and tall things at Walmart, you just can't do that here. These sizes are going to be smaller and extra, extra large here is not the same as an extra, extra large in the United States. So please keep that in mind before moving here. Those are all the points I could come up with today just off of the top of my head. If you have more, please comment down below. We can chat down there. Of course, if you fit the criteria for what you shouldn't move to Uruguay, but you still want to, by all means come along. There are still so many benefits of living in this country. And of course, a 10 minute video is not gonna be able to cover them all. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time with another video. Bye. Getting an apartment to rent or to buy without being in the country used to be pretty much impossible. There's rent and then gastos comunes. The same of no stupid questions. They don't really have that same saying here and they would not rent us the apartment without having this guarantee.